karma is defined as action or doing. I want to talk about karma today because the question of karma keeps coming up off and on with various people. It can be explained as cause and effect or described as bad or good depending on one's actions or as punishment and reward. It can be thought of as fate or bad luck or something we can mitigate with our good deeds. Depending on our beliefs, it can be connected with reincarnation and can bloom lifetimes later. I personally have run through many beliefs on my own about karma depending on the practice of the time. If you'd like to know more historical facts for yourself or what different sects of Buddhism teach about karma, you can look that up because there's a lot of it written online and in books. But today we have a limited time uh, for the talk, so I'd like to speak about what I believe is the place of karma in our lives now. I think that karma is not something to be afraid of or to try to ease with good behavior. We don't have to outwit karma. In fact, we can't outwit karma. It reflects active, uh, accurately on one's activities of body, speech, and mind. Karma is beyond manipulation of any kind, and it occurs with the inevitability of a flower budding, blooming, withering, and falling. Karma is a natural cycle of manifesting life as lived through self-nature. It reminds me of Zen master Deshan's koan. 30 blows if you say yes, 30 blows if you say no. Our difficulties can feel like a stick that hits us, but if we don't hide, we can see that we're also the hand that holds the stick. In karmic life, we're both the victim and the attacker, the innocent and the guilty, the judge and the jury. We've been meeting karmic happenings our whole lives, but only after we begin to meditate did we really think about our conditions and wonder about them. Why are things the way they are? Why am I the way I am? Why are others the way they are? Where am I going? What am I doing all this for? Before practice, we took for granted that unhappy conditions were caused by personal history or other people or just bad luck. It didn't occur to us that we could benefit from our circumstances as well as endure them or that we could sink or swim by the choices we made in every moment. Every step we make into this world begins an unfolding of all possibilities that if done with awareness leaves very little traces. Usually we leave great traces of our activities behind us because we learn with every step we take. These traces must be retrieved to complete us. Karma is our activity to complete our being in the self world. For our benefit and for the benefit of others, we must retrieve what we leave behind. Our traces leave a messy world we must deal with sooner or later. In the process of retrieval, we discover many aspects of ourselves we had forgotten about. In karma, we meet our completion. Nothing is left undone in karma. Every loose end is tied up in karmic activities. We should turn toward our experience of karmic returns because we're meeting not only a difficult condition, but another piece of our lost self-nature that has surfaced again, and we're ready to meet it this time and retrieve it. In the past, everything we threw away in intense emotions was something irreplaceable and left us incomplete. The result was that even in happier times, we were haunted with dissatisfaction. If we're alert, 
we won't bury our faces in our hands, but look to the times with resolution and bring back to ourselves what belongs to us. If we're alert, we won't bury our faces and ignore our lives as we meet them, but turn to face them with intention. The real struggle is in us, not outside of us. Karma is a word, word to express conditions that hold up a mirror to us, and we can sink or swim with the knowledge it shows us or fight it. We can choose to grow with the nourishment of that knowledge or live our lives in dissatisfaction and ignorance. The choice is ours. Karma, or the conditions that arise and fall, is Buddha nature and self nature in careful negotiation for our full potential. What body, speech, and mind does is closely followed by our whole being, which doesn't forget anything. So we meet that which helps us to fill in the gaps in our understanding. And they are physical, mental, and emotional forms of understanding. When we don't run from circumstances, we are ready to intimately know the relationship of our body, speech, and mind to the world we live in, that is to our present reality. We are ready to know inside and outside together as one being. We are ready to fill out completeness with aware acts of body, speech, and mind. We are already complete, in fact, but in our rush to learn in the physical world of self-nature, we make many mistakes. And as with a puzzle, we scatter many of our pieces we bring together later. If we don't mind the work and enjoy learning and relearning how to live in the world, the scattering of oneself can be an informative experience. Then we're ready to know the great hand and the small hand, the great heart and the small heart, and the great activity and the small activity, and take no pride in it, nor become too meek with the knowledge of it. We're ready to complete, to be one with all of it, and yet maintain our own name as well, without clinging to either, as we freely ride the changes of one to the other. That is, freely exchange between the activities of vast mind and limited mind, and then quickly let them go. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Jane, yeah. is karma something we shouldn't be obsessed by, but be aware of when we're doing our actions and not condemn ourselves, you know, when we realize we're being a jerk or something? Yeah. It, it, it's not a threat as much as just something that reminds us that we have to deal with something that we haven't dealt with or yeah. like staying after school. <laughs> <laughs> like that, yeah. It's just something we should be aware of and not basically call it good or bad, but just understand that it comes in many forms and it's our traces bringing themselves back to us. And that karma is just a name, you know, to explain this moment, this movement. Of it's, just another, it's another teaching tool that we have to be aware of. To yeah. It's a teaching tool, but it's also just a tool that we should understand it's us bringing itself back to us. It's not, we're not separate from it. What are you doing? Well, that's a new question to you. What's the question? And then what? Oh, and then what? Uh, nothing. Just live your life, but be aware that every action you make leaves a trace behind you. And if you're aware of that action, then, uh, there. If you're aware of the action, then you learn from it. It's an important learning. 
and you're not afraid of it. But if you start calling it bad karma or good karma or some kind of punishment or some kind of curse that you have to live with, you miss the point that it's you actually. It's your hand on the stick. <laughs> and it's you're the judge and the jury. It's all of it. You, you cannot separate yourself from the rest of reality. So as long as you feel you're separate, it's always coming back to you to show you it's not. And we call that karma. <laughs> But it's just a name. It's a name for the activity of ourself in an unknown way. It's how I see it. It's like inevitable. It's like, uh, in that sense, it's cause and effect. But it is inevitable. And every action you take creates that trace or that other activity. And so if you're aware and paying attention to what you're doing, then the activity is more understandable and you don't fight it as much. But if you think of it as something outside yourself coming in to clobber you, then you don't understand the real activity taking place between big mind and small mind. And that we're both. But it's definitely something to learn by. Not to be afraid of, however. Does big mind have karma? No, big mind does not. It's small mind that makes karma. But big mind is acting with it. Big mind is in the activity of everything that happens in our lives because it's us. It's the hand holding the stick. It's us being hit by the stick. It's both. It's us being the attacker and it's us being the victim. We're always involved in the whole world, but we pretend that we're in only half of it. And big mind is always reminding us, perhaps karma is another name for big mind, I don't know, but I think maybe it's a mixture of both. I do think what I said in the paper was that uh, big mind and small mind, karma is big mind and small mind in very careful negotiation with us to create our full potential, to bring about the conditions that will nourish the full potential. So for half of our lives, we probably were running from it and complaining about it and fussing about it. But uh, the more we practice, the more we realize that we're running from ourselves, not from something outside. So the real fight is always between us and us. Us as big mind, us as limited understanding. So you're saying that karma is reality? Yes, definitely. It's reality. It's yes, what the truth. We call reality karma. <laughs> That's a good point. So karma is, is great, I guess. I wouldn't call it great because it can be miserable. <laughs> but I would just say it's inevitable. And it's um. inevitable. Not from uh, some outside source, but by the actions we take with body, speech, and mind. We bring it about completely. But uh, we're on the receiving end of it, but we're also on the giving end of it. That's what I'm trying to say. Because we're both everything that we need, and we're also an individual separate being from everything we need. So we have to bring ourselves in touch. Yeah, Mark. When we're in nirvana, is that karma, karma less or is that karma? I think uh, the term nirvana, from my point of view, would just explain what the world is like when we're not involved in self nature only. So we're involved in a nature which allows us to work in the world and yet not lock, lock out the rest of the world. So it's like a complete world. And in that sense, karma would still exist as what we've created already. So no matter how wonderful you feel about life and how much you feel you enjoy or understand life, we still have karmic reactions that we ourselves set in motion before. So I wouldn't say that self nature, our big mind creates karma, but I would definitely say that small mind does. And small mind has to live with that, not because it's a punishment, but because it's how small mind finds completion by connecting with the rest of the world and the rest of the world is always coming in and bopping you on the head and saying hey don't forget me don't forget me and we're always saying who are you what are you doing <laughs> you know? 
and big mind is saying, don't be silly, you know, wake up, look at this. Yeah. I think samsara is when you're totally lost in self nature. Yeah. But nirvana to me would just be where self nature and big, big mind together come together as, as one understanding, not to, that is you understand the whole world as you, not just, uh, the individual we feel that we are, but that everything we do affects the rest of the whole world. Yeah. You feel free anybody to take issue with anything I'm saying here. <laughs> I don't expect anybody to take these words like swallow them whole. I always think that the thing is whenever you hear something that stirs inside, you should chew on it thoughtfully and swallow what you can and spit out what you can't. <laughs> but just, but figure out that what you do swallow will nourish you and what you spit out, you know, is because you, un it hasn't fallen into a set that you can understand. So it doesn't, nobody has to agree with everything I say. So please take issue if you want. Well, just to clarify, it's like karma is, neither good nor bad it's only us thinking it is so that with our small mind makes it yeah. so yes yes it's neither good nor bad it's just inevitable but not it's like the traces behind us coming up to say don't forget me so it's a newtonian universe then right every action is an op creates an opposite and equal reaction i don't know about that but i do think that everything we do does create us a trace that we leave behind and that trace is still us we can't do without it it's an important part of us we have to eventually retrieve all of that and karma is us in retrieval bringing that back to us but we see it as something separate because we don't connect with the rest of the universe as one being so when it comes back to us we think of it as something foreign to us but it's actually us in an unknown form. And we have to retrieve that back into our lives so that it becomes part of us again. So is there any way to hack karma? I don't think karma can be hacked, manipulated, moved, changed or anything because karma doesn't exist in that way. It's not a thing that you can handle or deal with. It's simply an activity and a movement that happens when something else happens. Like you take a step and you leave a trace. You made a mess with something and you leave a big trace. You handle things carefully, you leave a small trace, but the trace will still come back one way or another to be dealt with because it's us. We can't ignore what is us. Thank you. Uh, Sandy, did you have your hand up? Can't hear you. Her phone is that way. Her phone left. She had a phone on. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Uh, so I guess it, it's a good argument for staying in the now and being aware of right action, yeah. um, knowing that you're going to be leaving a trace. Yes. Whether small or large. Yes. Truthfully, you don't need to spend your time worrying about leaving traces because that's the learning, the leaving the traces and the retrieval of yourself and the emotions you've left behind and the uh, energies you've thrown all over the place. I mentioned it's like a puzzle where you just scatter the pieces. You can't lose them because they're part of the puzzle. And so you yes. just gather them back in again and put them where they belong. But uh, if you worry about it, then you miss the uh, fruitful activity that is taking place. That okay. is, leave all these parts of yourself that can be very surprising to discover and rediscover and know that this is you as well. Okay. The so best thing is not to worry about those things. Best thing right. is, is just to be aware that it's happening. And when you're losing your temper or you're getting all excited about something and you're worrying to death about something, know that you're throwing pieces around. You're scattering yourself. 
and that you don't have to do that if you calm yourself, you know, just think of it that way rather than thinking of traces. Thank you. Can you, can you, can you say that uh, karma and dependent origination are the same thing? Hmm. I don't know that I would say it was the same thing. It's like uh, dependent origination is like showing how one thing leads to another, which creates what it is now, with this long chain of happening. And karma is what this long chain of happening acts as after it's there. It's maybe how I would see it. That one, you step in. Well, I think also you could, even though know, karma means action, but also what we, we always think of it actually as a, as a reaction, and uh, which is to, to is to deal with it again, actually. So I would say that that probably they're not they're not exactly the same. I mean, they, 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 as Jane just said they describe different functions, and and one is the function of where. Our understanding of the nature of things comes from. Everything defines everything else. And so basically, you cannot say that everything exists in it in and of itself. Because our existence is made one thing by the nature of words and, and emotions. So, and so though those, all those things are don't don't lead to us being just one thing. But that said, karma talks about <coughs> what the effect of our actions are. It's the traces that you see again, finally. And it's back. a bit hard to hear. Go ahead. Helen? Helen? You, you had your question? hand up, didn't you? Do you have a question? Let's find out. Yeah, she does. Do you have a question? Uh, okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I think um, during all the question and answer, my question is answered, but just to so that I'm clear. When you say retrieving karma, retrieving it back to ourselves, when you were um, mentioning that in your talk, mm -hmm. so you're saying just recognize that it's me? What, what do you mean? Like Recognize that the situations you meet are you because it's you as the whole world, not you as the individual hell. It's you meeting you in an un un unknown form. It's you meeting all that you threw out in one way or another, and but it's coming back to you in a specific way. So that if you meet a program or program, if you meet a situation which requires you to behave a certain way, requires you to either endure or to be calm or to hold back or something, it's uh, allowing you to see the activity of your inner being at work. And if you're aware of that when it's happening, you can learn a great deal at that point. And if you do that, it dissipates in that sense. It doesn't like keep going round and round until you calm yourself. Say if you get angry at something and it comes back to you and then it, you get angry again, it keeps coming back to you until eventually you say, well, this is silly and just sit through it. And then it starts to slowly change because you're retrieving yourself at that point. And, and so you mean you're recognizing that it was your fault anyway? Is that what you mean by retrieving yourself? Retrieving yourself or retrieving the karma? And you receive it to retrieve it. You allow yourself not to bring your ego in between you and it. Because the ego prevents you from bringing it back. So when you calm yourself and just see it happening, you stay open and you allow yourself to be united with what is happening in your life. You don't end up becoming me against it. You become me working with it, retrieving it in any way that it comes to yeah. you. Uh, another way of saying this <coughs> is that uh, you're responsible for everything. Yeah. yeah. It's all you, it's all us. Yeah. You know? But we separate ourselves. So that's where we, that, we're in the center of ourselves. And as long as we're in the center of ourselves, we can really see where we are. If we're off on the periphery, maybe even outside of it, then we, then we get lost. And here's what Daniel wants to say. Okay. 
Does karma apply to non-actions? What is the karma of things we don't do? You mean non-actions like thinking things and not acting on them. Yes, it definitely does. But it doesn't do it. it to the extent that you throw things out hard, they come back hard. To the extent that you throw things out carefully, it comes back carefully. You, you meet what you are at that moment. If, you're, if you were rough and excited and emotional, it comes back rough and excited and emotional and you deal with it. And uh, if you just had thoughts of it, it comes back in those same things, in thoughts. And it comes back in all the ways that, that are hard to deal with, but because they're less obvious. So you may find yourself in situations where you keep meeting the fact that you're worried all the time about something. So you may find situations that are always setting you up to worry. And then at some point you say, this is silly. I don't have to go down the worry road. I will just calm myself and wait to see what's happening. And Steve had his hand up. Steve, did you have a question? <laughs> Talk to the hand. I can unmute. We can uh, unmute. All right, I'm here. Okay, so say I'm out in my yard working and I'm not really paying attention and I do something that irritates me and I turn around and I step on a rake and it whacks me in the face. Is that karma? I would think so. <laughs> <laughs> that would be karma of non-paying attention <laughs> because of emotion. So basically what I'm thinking it is is seeing the whole picture about your actions that you if you're not aware or paying attention then these things can get out of control and then you blame something else for it when in actuality it's the whole picture of what you set up by your not being uh, mindful yeah and I would say the rake coming up and hitting you is like big mind saying, hey, wake up, <laughs> wake up. Right. Yeah. And, and, and then instead of getting mad at that, even more furious at that moment, yeah, I need to laugh and need to laugh and say, I set this whole thing up. I wouldn't even go that far. I would just say, thank you. <laughs> and go put something on my head. <laughs> And next time, yeah, wear a hat or something, but if it does do it. <laughs> helmet. We can't try to be too perfect in this. You know, we can't try to outwit fortune or fate or whatever. And we can't try to do things such a way that we never have trouble. Because the trouble and everything is not, I mean, trouble is the term we use to explain what we don't like. But everything that happens to us is a fruitful experience of some kind and we're in the middle of it and we're actually meeting a part of ourselves that we set up before that is coming back to us and reminding us of who we are and when we are open we understand we're not who we think we are we are much more than we think we are and you start to meet yourself everywhere you turn by these uh, things, you meet yourself as the individual and you meet yourself as the whole world. So if you try to be too careful or if you worry and you call it this bad and that good, then uh, you actually are trying to control and manipulate fortune and fate. And I don't think that's a possible thing to do. I think- No, you know, no, I agree, I agree. Into a different world and make them much harder when they come around again. The idea is to understand this motion that is in play all the time. And we've been doing it for most of our lives, only we didn't know that. We always were fighting it, you know, it's miserable this and terrible fate and my childhood did this and that, etc. But actually, where we are now is exactly where we are and who we are. And each one of you sits in the center of your world and manipulates all of these forces without knowing that you're doing it but you're doing it from a wider scale because you are that wider person. So all you have to do is accept that you are more than just a limited being 
and that you don't have to only live in ego and self world, but that your self world is who you are and how you manipulate in the world in ordinary activities, but not how you can handle your fortune and fate, as it were, in the form of karma. You have to be open to deal with that correctly. You can manipulate all you want in the self world, but in the world of the vast mind, you must just be open and willing. Well, I, I find emotions a lot of times I will start to feel this, whatever it is, usually anger, and go, do I really want to go, do I really want to put myself through this again? Because it really doesn't solve anything. And a lot of times I miss the lesson in life because I'm caught up in my own little you know, tantrum about what had just happened to me instead of seeing what is it that I did that set this thing up? Is that? Yes, exactly. So you're learning all the time. And if you think of yourself always in a situation that the world is like a school and you're learning everything about yourself in a wider scale than you have any idea of when you start. And so as you practice, you begin to grow more aware of the connection you have with this person, with that person, with this incident and that incident. And finally, you understand that karma is just you at work with your small self. It's the activities of both your big mind and your small mind working together, not separate. And as long as we think we're separate, we keep meeting it like a negative experience. Right. It's hard to see it as uh, something that's working together with a vast mind, which is us, then, uh, but us in the center of our world, not us on the periphery anywhere. And so when you see it that way, then it becomes always a kind of learning experience, even if it's sometimes unpleasant or a lot unpleasant. <laughs> That's whatever, you know, it's, if we just get rid of the unpleasant term, then it just becomes a different kind of experience. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah. Donna, excuse Hi. me. So, you know, in, in listening to your Dharma talk and, and all the questions, um, I feel that it's like you're, whether you're aware of it or not, whatever you're putting out, it's like a boomerang, right? So it can either come back, hit you on the head if you're not paying attention, or, you know, when you're paying attention, you catch it and then kind of send it back out again. Like, a, you know, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do, but I don't think you would send it out again. I think it's more like you're standing in a situation where you're getting handed this and that and you're always handing it off to somebody else and then one day you realize that this was a very precious thing and you don't hand it to anybody else you keep it you leave it with yourself and it eventually returns to you as you are which is your real inner being inner being and it's like uh if you hand it off it comes around again no matter how many times you hand it off it will come around and come around so the thing is just to meet it openly, let it enter, let it be you, let it sit in your lap without doing anything. It's like that koan, leave it in your lap with nowhere to go and nothing to do. Okay. Hi, Scott. Yeah. Um, Peter, last week when we were speaking of karma, you said karma was, and I might mischaracterize this, for the individual, maybe not for the collective, it's not to be for someone else, but you know, when I look at things like climate change, you know, is, is that collective karma? And when I look at, you know, let's say uh, systems like uh, economics or money, con things of consensus reality, you know, they, they seem to operate by some karmic principle, too. Um, am I getting these things conflated? Um, yeah, maybe. Maybe. Although what you're saying, is, of course, seems, of course, like, yeah, that, that's definitely cause and effect. If our civilization, world civilization, has caused these things, and we have to deal with them because they're things that we made. That's true as a group. 
you know, and, it's, and, it, and it operates very bigly when we're operating with other people. But karma is particularly, uh, but in that way, you know, it it's, gets involved, even that, at that level, it gets involved in, the, in a kind of uh, blame game, right? And I think James is making clear right now today, without using those wor these words, that it's not about blame. It's not about blame. I, I'm saying it in a different way, but with the same meaning, which is I'm saying, don't use it to blame others. Only, only use it with yourself. That's all, because it, it gets turned around so often, as a, as a, as a, uh, as a rather than a, rather than a personal thing, as a social thing, and uh, it doesn't do any good. It's actually only. Uh, uh, putting down yourself, uh, putting up yourself while putting down others, actually. And so that's, so, that's against the precepts also. When, when the cause is obvious, it's hard not to blame, right? Or it's not, it's easy to see the cause and say, hey, we can abate this and maybe to blame a group or some, something. No, you and you're don't. saying don't do that. Oh yeah, but, but you act. You're not acting then as a judge. You're acting then as a as Kuan Yin, as an Ablakiteshvara. You're saying, oh, there's something. There's there's suffering here. I'm going to try to help with it. It's there. Okay. It's the, like, just, you know, I've been watching uh, uh, Governor Cuomo, and you, and you probably have too. You're from New York also. <laughs> and he handles these things really well. Yeah. I was watching, he, he had a, I don't get to hear him because I'm usually getting ready to teach my classes. But this morning I happened to hear him, but he was really good this morning. He was really, really, really good. Yeah. But he never, and he knows what's what's what, but he never gets involved. He only gets involved with what can we do. Yeah. Not, we don't, he doesn't get involved in the karma of President Trump, which of course is quite obvious to all of us Democrats, certainly, if not to people on the other side. He doesn't get involved in that. He just says, what can, what can I do? And he says, and he answered another day, he said, I'm going to, I just, all I can do is tell the truth. So, you know, when, when I watch Cuomo and using that as an example, and, you know, I think, you know, does he have a jet, an agenda? You know, he seems non-political and genuine, but, you know, he seems to resonate as upaya for me, yeah. you know, that he is, you know, the definition of skillful means. Yeah, exactly. In direct, you know, the antithesis of Trump, right? That's right. Well, <laughs> but anyway, it's, it's quite true. But, you know, skillful means is, 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 is the uh, weaponry, as it were. I use that word cautiously here, but with, with a kind of uh, fun <laughs> for the heck weapon. So, of, of the bodhisattva. See, and okay. the whole purpose is to relieve suffering. Not where, you know, personally, we can deal with where it comes from, but in society, we just want to help the suffering of others in any way that we can. And generally, if we, if we make it non-personal, I'm not saying Cuomo is Bodhisattva saint, he just does, he, just, he works pretty well in, in, in this real world. And we, and we can work in the same way. So, I, I guess when I watch this is you know, when, I, when, when I watch Cuomo and I, I say, you know, the, the truth is self-evident. So how come this only resonates with, you know, sixty percent of the population? How come it doesn't resonate with the other forty? If it it you know is clear and obvious, you know why? Why is there always that 30, 40 percent? Whoever has a situation where you, uh, you, you, pro you, beyond all else, you protect the person close to you. Or, or you, or, of course, you're, 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 this is part of a person, I think for you, particularly, uh, Spencer, other people don't know your, your life, I know a little bit about it, and that, uh, you are you are you are always fighting people doing bad things and trying to get them not to do bad things. You know, and uh, and and but it, but of course it's very very difficult. 
But you just solve the problem. Forget the blame. They, all, they keep saying it's time for blame later. Yeah, we can blame when we're playing politics, yeah. But you definitely shouldn't be president. But, you know, that's but, not, not the point. Not yeah. the point. But, Spencer, the uh, point is, in, in this talk anyway, is that we are responsible 100% for ourselves. And we sit in the center of our world. And all that we see around us in the world is us. And it's us reflecting something from our interior. And we have to first acknowledge and work with that and deal with it. And when we do that, afterwards, if you have the time and the energy, go out and work in it elsewhere. But if we don't reflect and understand that the evil we see everywhere is somewhere in us that has manifested out there, not where we are in this situation, but still there because it's us. And if we understand that, then the role of karma is that we deal with it with skillful means as a way to uh, acknowledge that we are the whole world that we're looking at and that we encompass all of that evil and difficulty that we're seeing, as well as all of the good things that we're seeing. I, I get the feeling that we're dancing on the edge of concepts and opinions which can taint our clarity of view of a situation and is karma one of the dangers of dealing with karma is the fact that we can form opinions and concepts that aren't fixing what we're dealing with and i'm, I'm trying to be real careful with my words because of this but, but yeah i think so mike because your opinions are fine as long as they're, you're taking all the responsibility, 100% for the world on yourself and for the actions you're meeting and the, the things and working to remain open and deal with the whole world as it comes to you. You can't deal with it where it isn't, but you can deal with it where it is and what comes to you is you and you're allowing it because you're ready for it. It wouldn't, you wouldn't see it if you weren't. So, you can you can deal with the world when you have the time and energy but if you don't understand the forces or the the activities that are going on within you and without you at the same time then there can be a real problem with how you see the world so i would also spencer be very careful of using words like self-evident because what is self-evident to you may not be self-evident to somebody else and uh, when we get into the terms of this is right and this is wrong, we're really treading on very thin ice until we solve the dilemma of us and the rest of the world. Then we're always skating on thin ice whenever we judge anything in the rest of the world. So it will, judgment also comes back and comes back until we look at it. I have a question. Yes. Um, so is there only one karma or is, is there individual karmas? There is the one karma in your life, in your world. And so, that you so I, faces. So there is only one karma for me? For you, yes, because the rest of the world has its karma too. But since there are aspects of you, you know, it always comes back to you. So... I understand that there's no point blaming something happening around me, something that I have to deal with. Yes. Um, but at the same time, it does happen. I mean, does it ever happen that um, things happen, things happen without my control? And if someone was hurting somebody out of nowhere is it still that person's karma is it happening because of something that person did or could it be just kind of random it's not random it's it's uh something connected to you again but it it could be on the other side of the world and you would still say it's it's your karma to see it and to understand it and what it comes from is something in you that hasn't come out to the surface enough to work with you can't look at somebody else but everybody in you every single one of you is the center of your world and therefore you have all the responsibility of that world in you 
and it's uh, we're going to study another uh, thing of Suzuki Roshi's that uh, is called "Be the Boss of Your World," and uh, I think that's a very interesting thing. Is that take responsibility for your life 100% for everything, and do not feel that you can point your finger at anyone because everything comes back to each individual us. So would it? be okay to say that we all have our own karma, but it's connected to everyone else's? No, I don't, I haven't gone that far. <laughs> I've just got trying to work out this world. <laughs> and so I don't know if our worlds, you know, connect karmas or not. I tend to think not, but you know, maybe. Because like, I'm not, I'm saying that if somebody higher up does something and we're all affected by it. Uh-huh. Um, I wouldn't necessarily blame that person for affecting our lives because we, we chose our actions to be in that situation and it's ours to deal with. We have to be responsible for where, what situations throw at us. I understand that much. But at the same time, I didn't take those actions. So... There's, there's what's you know, there's you know we we have our problems and and they're and they're personal problems or things that you know we have not sent us or something whatever you want to say and then and 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 all that we can do is as you know is to is to work with that and then and then when we try if if we do it long enough and we're able to work work things out as it were within ourselves and you're able to let go of a lot of things that have been confining us and restricting us in life then at the, but at the same time we we understand that it, you know we are no big deal uh and at that point then you're in only then are you able to really help other people yeah that's a good point so peter on what grace right was that grace that was speaking earlier Mm -hmm. huh? Yeah, go ahead, Donna. Oh, so, so in, in, in that, in that, um, what, so you, you're operating your own karma, right? In your world. And I, you know, there's, there's overlapping karmas that are coming at you from other people, right? So wouldn't you say that it would be whatever car, whatever is thrown your way, it's your karma is how you react to yes, yes. how your karma is? You, say? Even if you can't control what they're doing you can control what you put out for yourself in your yeah karma world yeah do i have that right yes yes okay. yeah if you. You, if you react you're not receiving it if you receive it it's a whole different game it's like you know the pinball machines you know, where you hit the ball and it goes up and it hits various things and you're that with your hand, you're shaking the machine and trying to move it where you want it to go. And you're like the ball, the small self is like the ball, but the big self is like the hand that's playing the whole game. So everything that's happening is you meeting it and not refusing it, but learning from it, I think. What do you think? That's good enough for me. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> anyone else yes sandy? It looks like sandy wants to say something yep uh, um, uh june you may not have finished what you wanted to say also please continue if, if you like oh it's just um so whatever happens in our lives we're responsible for it. i i understand that like, even if it seems unfair on the surface it's there for a reason right that we can learn from it um but at yeah. the same time i just don't sorry Go ahead. Go ahead. yeah i just don't think that um when, when we're doing something and it's giving you a great deal of um issues because of somebody else's world colliding with mine um sometimes in my experience sometimes it kind of seemed like uh staying in that somebody else's world with mine was actually 
not teaching me anything because the real teaching in that was to walk away from that. Mm -hmm. Does that ever happen? Yeah, sure. That sounds like a good learning experience. Uh, we go through everything. There's no limit to what we can learn. So, yeah, any kind of thing. You learn when to walk away. You learn when to ignore. You learn when to speak softly. You learn when to speak loudly. You learn whatever works. Like even in this world right now where we're having such a terrible time, there are wonderful people out there doing incredible deeds and things that I've never seen before, you know, happening. And, and so I think, you know, we can call this a terrible time, but it's not. It's both. It's like a mixture of most incredible things and also of uh, terrible at the same time. So we can't just look at it and judge the whole world by what circumstances are, but looking up closely, seeing what's actually happening as well. Looking up close. It's like, uh, oh, well, anyway, you, you know what I mean. <laughs> anyway. Anyone? Oh, yes. Sandy, Sandy wanted to say something. Can't hear you now. Sandy, can't hear. Hello. Oh, um, did I unmute? No, we got it now. I, I unmuted. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, it seems to me that w when you first started talking about this, some things actually came up for me. And I had always wondered, how do you forgive people? How do you let go? You know, I could never get around the concepts, but I just, I had this experience while you were talking that uh, when these things do come up in the past, I've looked at things with blame, uh, and now I realize that I that was delusional. You know, he was good, I was uh, I, I was good, he was bad, uh, things like that. Now I need to realize, and, and I did. I looked at one situation and I saw that. I was responsible. Um, I created it. My mind created um, the the judgments, mm -hmm. and the judgment is not the way to look at it. That you have to, when these things come up, you have to see them for just what they are, and real and see the that it is our own actions that caused them. Um, other people might have actions too, but you can't say they did that to you or, you know, uh, they acted nasty because they just did what they did. Um, I think, and that to me is like a, a, a letting go um, or a forgiveness. Uh, oh, my internet connection is unstable. The, the, uh, <laughs> the, uh, what's yes. your I'd like to just comment on what you were just saying, that uh, the uh, uh, situation you're talking about where somebody does something cruel and uh, you can say they didn't do that really, it was me, this, it, you may have set it in motion, but it was a cruel thing that happened and that's what we're talking about. We can't uh, soft soap the situations that come to us, for example. Cruel Blame's not going to help, is it? But, and well, no, it's just that if you meet a cruel situation, it seems like the lesson you're learning is how do you forgive? Yes. Yes. Well, the forgiveness also, oh. is something you work out in that situation. Mm -hmm. like you can't do it by saying they didn't mean it or something. You'd have right. to. No, but I mean, yeah. to see, you know, your part in the situation you put yourself in this that situation for some reason um but yeah. i understand what you're saying so but i have one comment up that I, I wanted to say something about what spencer talked about when he talked about the bigger picture or the environment or whatever um last night on tv a few of the shows were showing how beautiful around the world the air quality is now because we're not driving. And that uh, they showed pictures of cities before and after the pandemic and how beautiful they had become. And 
the streets were empty and animals like, you know, um, wolves were wandering and things like that and coyotes. And so there is a way, it showed that there is a way that we can change the world. We can change our environment. And this pandemic shows, um, you know, that if we changed over from fossil fuels for driving, what a difference it would make in our world. So, you know, it's like, it's a learning tool too. You have to take that as a, um, a way to look at that we do really, we make our environment, our mind makes our life, you know, and those, and what we see. And so I thought, you know, it really, it shows how much we actually, by our actions, um, have harmed the world and how simple changes can be to make things a better place here for all of us. Yeah, I agree.